uh, good evening all the delegates and faculty on behalf of the organizer i welcome you all for today's meeting on master class lecture on supportive care in acute leukemia without wasting any further time with the permission of the organizers we will start today's proceedings now i introduce dr devmalaya bhattacharya teacher for today's meeting he is a consultant department of hematology and pmt apollo multi specialty hospitals kolkata india over to you sir good evening everyone so thank you isbt for giving me this opportunity for taking this master class and my topic is today supportive care in acute leukemia management so this is actually a very very important topic why because uh, we know uh, leukemia treatment consists of some uh, um, chemotherapy and radiation uh, some uh, high end medicines for which there is a mix and match of medicines combination therapy for this but problem is that the supportive care many people forget when you, when we used to study we are, we were we are not aware of the supportive care why because supportive care we had uh, we were not that much uh, read in our textbook what we read we read the uh, chemotherapy combinations uh, mechanism of actions like this and for this this is a very important topic and uh, i have made the slides very uh simple because i don't want to discuss some guidelines or some uh, other things which are uh, already written in some books and journals this is the age of internet so we can always have some uh, downloads and uh, read on the data but i like to share some of my experiences and uh, problems i faced during our daily, daily practice <coughs> so i will start uh, on yeah, next so uh, the variation of leukemia acute leukemia there are two sub types next uh, next one is acute myeloid leukemia another one is acute lymphoid lymphoblastic leukemia so these two leukemias are actually very uh, different types of needs uh, different types of approach and treatment and obviously this acute myeloid leukemia is more dreadful and uh, the patient is kept, kept in patient so patient remains long in hospital for uh, treatment purpose and there is very much morbidities and mortality with treatment of aml whereas on the contrary for all patients it is relatively different the patients remain relatively stable both in patients and uh, they may need in patient chemotherapy and at times they need out patient chemotherapy so for these uh, the treatment varies why is the treatment varies because the outpatient uh, uh, patients who are being treated on outpatient basis they may not be that uh, easy to see daily on daily basis or what is happening in their house or in other places we don't know as a doctors as least we as a consultant we we can never know that is a problem so uh, so the supportive care in those those uh, patients is relatively different why different because um we may not uh, be uh, knowing the what is what is in the background what is happening what is the problem with the patient's family what are the financial uh, background what are the issues like that so what is supportive care supportive care uh, there is uh, there the support can be from different pillars of uh, uh, during a hospital or treatment management one is from medical aspect another one uh, is from transfusion part a uh, blood transfusion is a difficult thing nowadays especially in uh, non government hospitals or private hospitals uh, antibiotics and prevention of infections uh, or preemptive measures central line or picc management comorbidities management nutrition or diet that is very important and above all psychological support and financial and logistics support. so these are the things which i deem fit for discussions during uh, this class uh, for management of acute leukemia on supportive role so these are those so we know the actors are uh, different but the supportive actors they make the film so this is very important so i am not going in uh, wasting time and there are few guidelines which uh, tells us about the different um, protocols or regimens i am not going in details of those now medical team support is very important because this is the main base of your treatment why base because 
everything is there, but there is no proper medical team. This is uh, the treatment will be a complete failure. And obviously, this treatment cannot be handled by a single doctor. Now, uh, listen, uh, this is uh, the, the era of aura among the main chief consultant is nowadays over. So medical science is, is uh, the treatment of any patient is now a team effort. So you can never uh, blame or give the credit, credit or discredit to a single person during leukemia treatment because the treatment is long term. One single doctor can single handedly cannot manage day to day treatment planning and uh, other setups. So combination of consultant, RMO or duty doctors, chemotherapy nurses and intensive care nurses are the most important pillars of your care. And role of consultant is relatively less in all treatment plan because the consultant gives around uh, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, uh, twice daily maximum. And consultant gives the opinion. But that the execution of the uh, work or execution of the procedures, sampling, collection of blood, uh, giving a proper injections or in timely chemotherapy, prevention of extra vaccinations. So these are the main things which should be handled by the lower tier uh, staff. This, this is very important for a, a successful uh, running of hospital. You need a group, group ground, uh, good number of ground, uh, ground uh, people who work on the ground level meticulously and sincerely with a proper training and expertise. So, for, for example, if the RMO duty doctors fail to do some um, uh, fail to do uh, some information, passing of some information like fever, temperature, or uh, neutropenia reports, so this will be a failure on uh, their part. Another thing is the chemotherapy nurses. If the chemotherapy nurses is not cannot assess the uh, IV cannula status, how whether it is properly infected or not, that is also the failure. Now, intensive care nurses, intensive care nurses, these are they are important because of, in many times the patient require uh, ICU admissions, and uh, for those people, the, uh, many times we have seen that PICC was good, was functioning well. Patient was shifted uh, to ICU or HDU for some severe hyperglycemia episode, and after the patient comes back to the ward, the PICC line or the central line is blocked. So this is because of the callousness of the I people handling in the ICU. Why it is callousness? Because they may not be properly have uh, maintained the patency of the tube by um, of the uh, line by proper timing, timely uh, infusion of heparin, heplox, like that. So this is very important. Now another important part of supportive care medical management is the proper passing of information. So this is a duty, a duty of the duty doctors to collect the report in time and inform the consultant or the concerned person at the earliest. And critical report notification. This critical report notification is also important part from the lab aspect. The lab people, whenever they found something unusual or something critically low or critically high, they should inform the duty doctors or the consultant directly so that the, there should not be delay in the intervention. Suppose uh, I'm giving some examples. Suppose the patient's WBC count is 630 and the critical report was missed and you have given the chemotherapy on that day for uh, cytarabine in ALA. So that is a mistake. So you should not uh, do that. You should be more aware of while passing the critical report in for notification. And also for the uh, for other things, suppose the ACPT, ACOT is high or the sugar level is high or sometimes in the relapsed patients, the reappearance of the blasts. So these are the very important things which can be done. Now, another point from duty doctors or medical team is the early detection of the medical emergency. Suppose the patient is having some um, high blood sugar level or some um, pancreatic pain following ALS aspergillus uh, infusions after a few days. So these are the medical emergency in ALL setup. So these are the uh, things which you should pick up in timely, in proper way and inform uh, the consultant. So these are the many, uh, many things which are required on the supportive role by the medical team, especially the detection of the medical emergency because if you not act in time that there, there will be you may lose the patient and timely intervention after informing the, the consultant advices and the medical team and nurses they should immediately uh, execute the advice of the consultant this is also important suppose the consultant has written uh, some antibiotics or urgent ultrasound but you are doing it after uh, six to eight hours so then the advice will have no value 
so for this leukemia treatment uh, management in the inaction phase the time is gold next now i have made a specific uh, portion that is called febrile leukopenia febrile leukopenia is a dreadful combination uh, complication of leukemia management and this febrile neutropenia should be managed in very uh, active way say um, you should do very you, you be very uh, hyper i i must tell the resident doctor nurse should be very hyper to pre uh, prevent the this complication so what is that the detection and assumption of the neutropenia is most important suppose if you should always doubt or guess chances of neutropenia now another point is that golden period of febrile neutropenia yeah the first one hour of having a fever or the uh, more than 100 degree fahrenheit is very important at times we may not give the degree of fever because many neutropenic patients they may not have a full manifestation of the fever and uh, IV fluid maintenance, maintain, uh, checking of the urine output is very important. Uh, and along with that, the choice of antibiotics according to the hospital policy or the local guidelines is also important. Because we always follow the Western guidelines, we may not be that good in following the uh, Western guidelines because we should uh, make our own guidelines because India is a subcontinent. And in many big hospitals uh, or institution institutions, uh, we follow the main uh, our local policy wise uh, antibiotic policy because in some setup the piperacin tazobactam is a primary uh, primary antibiotics in febrile neutral fast dose even in some places it is uh, stepoparazam salbactam anyway one broad spectrum antibiotic of uh, choice according to the uh, local policy should be uh, administered and this fast dose of antibiotic is very important you should uh, draw a blood culture uh, before that and send it to the lab and also Information from the lab is very important. If there is any growth after one day or two days, that should be important. That that falls into the category of passing the information in proper time. So this is very important, and, uh, and there are many guidelines for management of the uh, febrile uh, neutropenia. So this is a very quite uh, needful thing, and of primary concern. Primary concern is for the uh, duty doctors and nurses. Now, another big point in leukemia is transfusion support. Obviously, it's a blood cancer. So, there will be always a need of blood transfusions frequently. So, off and on, it is required. In AML patients, the blood transfusion is very continuously. It may be required a daily or alternate day blood transfusion is re required because AML induction is a very uh, sophisticated treatment plan and you should be very cautious while treating this. Uh, AML patients during the induction phase. So, AML induction is very important. And cutoff of hemoglobin, you, you, we usually 8 gram or platelet less than 20,000 is the usual standard, but there is some variations like in acute promyocytic leukemia patients, we keep a platelet uh, threshold more than 30,000 at least. And in bleeding patients, we try to maintain it more than 50,000. But it is not, it is very often, it is not possible in that way. So in those cases, we have to do uh, the customized treatment, uh, not according to the guidelines, but definitely we should not over transfuse the patient. Over transfusion is very uh, problematic. You may land up into trouble during over transfusions. You may have un, un, uninvited or unwelcome complications while uh, you will be when you will be doing over transfusions. And another point or hazard is the platelet refractoriness. It's a very common problem because patients, if, uh, if the patients mostly given RDBs or random pool donor plasma platelet. And these random donor platelets cause increased refractiveness. So when whatever platelet you give, there will be no increment in the platelet count. So we advocate HDP, HDP transfusions for those, those patients. But often it is not uh, applicable in every scenario or every setup. HDP is difficult to procure or may, uh, to make. And another point is that a suitable donor may not be available at times. And another point is transfusion related hazards. This is also very important because uh, this transfusion uh, is a complicated process. Many doctors or nurses, they take transfusion very casually, but this and uh, in leukemia patients who are frequently transfused, it is not a matter of uh, easy thing. So this has to be managed. You, you should take information from your uh, transfusion medicine experts or blood bank experts, that's why. Because many times we, we may miss the minor 
mismatch transcription reactions or we may have uh, be there we may face some uh, trally following infections because the patients get heavy treatment uh, for uh, other uh, therapies there may be fluid overload pre existing and always you should re uh, prevent uh, or avoid better to say night time non emergency transfusion if the suppose the patient is hemoglobin is poor and patient is bleeding that time you always do the transfusion in the night time but if the patient is bleeding hemoglobin is 7.2 patient is stable there is no need to do on hurry uh, night time blood transfusion you should do it after in the morning time so these are the main things for blood transfusion support that you should always uh, be very cautious and take whenever you have any problem you face any problem you should take help from the transfusion medicine experts <clears throat> now next is uh, central line or picc care this is very important we may not uh, face this in all patients very often because adult all patients they seldom require picc but yes at times they require but uh, for these um, aml patients we always prefer to do one central line because of the daily sampling and chemotherapy number of antibiotics to be given for those things and essential it is a essential thing for long term treatment and it gives uh, much comfort to the patient so for patients care because many patients they are irritated this is quite natural they are quite irritated with frequent sampling and uh, putting iv cannulas having pain thromboflebitis all these things for those patients it's of very big boon that uh, there are some long line has been kept properly so and it is of uh, very help if you give some corrosive chemotherapy we had the chance of excavation is very high and it will be complicated in those patients we always uh, this long line is helpful next one is picc uh, proper expertise in handling of picc i was talking before that you should always do one proper uh, handling of the picc maintenance of the patency of the picc and prevent picc related infections antibiotic log culture from the picc is required and very often you should not be very prudent to remove the picc for central line or jugular line you can remove it easily but for picc it is very costly and we the main purpose of the doing pi picc will be lost if you remove it prematurely because picc should be take uh, should be there for few months so that the cost will be uh, worth it the, uh, the, the the it will be cost effective but if you mishandle the line and you there is a picc related thrombus or infections then you have to do that is very unfortunate scenario and the removal of picc is required if there is some thrombosis or some bad bacterial infection like staph pseudomonas or enterococcus infection and the patient is very much febrile for those patients on those scenario we should always do uh, removal of the picc irrespective of the uh, time passed from the uh, interruption now management of comorbidity so this is a seldom we often miss in the initially but this management of this comorbidity remains very important because the pre existing diabetes and hypertension especially in the elderly age group is of much concern because the treatment protocols mostly involve steroids in acute leukemia and this for this steroid uh, help uh, uses the chance of hyperglycemia is very high especially in the diabetic patients even if the patient if the patient is not diabetic then also there is chance of steroid induced hyperglycemia even in the pediatric age group so we have seen many obese patients or in many young children who are suffering from steroid induced hyperglycemia and another point is that avoidance of the nephrotoxic drugs in patients who have having early ckd like you cannot use amphotericin b or some long standing amitacin for those patients whose the creatine whose creatine is quite high so this is also of concern because at times it is difficult and early suspicion for pancreatitis in all patient receiving steroid and elaspirin is also very important especially in the pediatric age group there is chance of pancreatitis following elasprazinis so you should always do the lipase amylase ultrasound and other markers like crt uh, to find out any uh, pancreatitis early and uh, this comorbidity is very uh, it's more complicated when there is steroid induced hyperglycemia another big problem we face during our treatment is drug induced hepatopathy or transaminitis i have i am now uh, presently i am dealing with one patient who is having ail patient with transaminitis and probably it is due to drug induced so this is very challenging for us to do these things and often it we have to uh, defer the chemotherapy we may not take the 
may not uh, be able to do timely chemotherapy. So that is a challenge and drawback of the common comorbidities. Because if you give chemotherapy, there will be a further aggravation. There may be other problems. Another problem is drug-induced venous thrombosis. The main problem, main positive agent is obviously uh, elasprazinase. Also, it can occur with uh, virtually any other therapy. But due to low platelet count, we never face, we usually don't face much in AML patients. But for ALL patients, thrombosis is a special venous thrombosis, sagittal venous thrombosis, intracranial thrombosis is very dreadful uh, nightmare for us. But proper diagnosis of the thrombosis, early diagnosis, if it is PICC related thrombosis, you may have to remove the PICC and uh, do proper anticoagulations uh, with proper dosing. So these are the co-management of comorbidities. Among these, drug-induced transaminitis and steroid-induced hyperglycemia are more uh, very much common in our practice. And you may take help of insulin to control the blood sugar because if you don't control the blood sugar, there may be increased chance of infections in those patients. Then comes the nutritional support. So nutritional support is also very important because it is an essential part of leukemia management. Long-term muscle protein loss is a potential adverse effect of AML treatment because the patient remains in hospital for a long time, gives chemo uh, uh, takes chemotherapy for uh, a long period, had chemotherapy-induced uh, problems. And for ALL patients, there will be weight gain on obesity due to long-term steroid usage because in... in <clears throat> induction and reintensification phase of BFM protocol, there is a good amount of steroid given for a long day. So these are the things which can cause weight gain and obesity for ALL patients. Mostly we see many patients who become obese after the therapy and many patients who become uh, uh, cachectic after therapy, but the cachectic group is usually they belong to the AML group. And those patients suffer from mucositis and CINV, that is chemotherapy-induced nausea, vomiting. And this is a challenge for the pediatric age group people to maintain a good nutritional balance because pediatric patients, we know they are very difficult to convince about that about their disease. So they, and there are many tantrums. Accord, it's quite natural in that age group. So to maintain a good nutritional balance is very important as well uh, in all uh, in uh, pediatric age group and also in the elderly age group because of the mucositis and other issues there may be depression in the patient so he will be not able to food uh, take food many patients they just do vomiting start vomiting after seeing any injection or gloves injection or uh, uh, syringes like that so these are the potential effects but you have to maintain a good nutritional support because long term treatment there will be muscle loss if you don't replace the proteins in proper amount, there will be loss of cachexia and other problems. This is very important. Another point is mucositis during methotrexate uh, consolidation in ALL patient. In those patients who develop severe mucositis, you may opt for uh, parenteral nutrition. But in ALL treatment, we seldom need total parenteral nutrition because the mucositis is not that uh, long-standing, except in the relapsed refractory treatment group. In those patients, as the chemotherapy dose is higher, there may be uh, mucositis, uh, more mucositis, and or in, in the, that group which where use the hypersecret protocol or we use the RACE protocol, that is the relapsed refractory or high risk ALL patients. So, but so regular visit by the nutritionist is, is essential because the doctors cannot manage every uh, cannot manage this by measuring the calories, calorie deficit, everything, the food calories. And so this is not a job of um, a daily job of doctors. Obviously, they will give their inputs, but the main job is by the nutritionist. Now, psychological and social support. Initially, we used to laugh at this point because at many times we knew we were superior, we are doctors, so this is a, this is not a big job. We had that attitude initial during our initial student days. But actually, this is very important because. The psychological and social support is very important for successful completion and continuation of the chemotherapy because the treatment is long term. Six months to two years of treatment is very is not a matter of joke. And there is gross psychological stress in every level uh, during uh, this treatment plan, especially mostly it is highest during the time of diagnosis or during the time of chemotherapy induced nausea vomiting or you, if you develop some, if the patient develops some complications. So these are the very important stress. And another new stress or more aggravating stress is when there is a relapse of the disease. So these are the main things which we should take into concern. And the steps are the psychology counseling is a must. 
I personally prefer psychology counseling for all patients at diagnosis because they may not be that frank to your doctors initially, to the doc uh, consultant doctors initially, but maybe more friendly with the psychologist because the job of psychologist is to convince the patient. So psychologists are much more mentally close, emotionally attached with those patients. And may, there are many social groups uh, which can help in the uh, help especially for the children, they may play with them and uh, relieve out the space for, and also for their parents. And they, this support, social support and psychological support, they also took, take care of the academics in children for long-term treatment because many patients study, uh, many student, uh, children studies suffer a lot because of the long, especially for the ill patient, the treatment is two years long and there may be intermittent neutropenia, fever, disruption of normal life. So in those patients, uh, academics is also, maintenance of the academics is also very important and that keep the patients, uh, the children in child in good shape mentally. And another important point is financial and logistic support. And this is, I think this is the most important uh, for acute daycare management. Assessment of the financial reserve and status and uh, other logistic support is very important while, before beginning of chemotherapy. Loss of many patients, there's a printing missile, loss of many patients due to these reasons. Because in uh, if, if you work in a medium poor or a resource poor setup, we, la we lost many patients uh, due to this financial and logistic disease. Patients go to their hometown, take some Ayurvedic medicine and ultimately die. And uh, there will be, uh, there are many NGOs who help the patients. You have to inform the patients about this. And logistic support, they may take help from peer group. Maybe they often in many, many hospitals, there are uh, patients support group. Even the patients, relatives or parents, they have made a group. They do some WhatsApp group and they help each other. So these are the new um, uh, good things for these patients. Another one is the hospital social service system. They also a group which helps the patient, especially this more required in the first one month of treatment because the patient's family is known, you know, is not new to the hospital, uh, is not so closely attached with the hospital's policy system. So in those patients, so that they don't get uh, nervous. Uh, for those patients, this hospital social service system is also required. And another important uh, thing is unemployment of the parent due to long-term treatment because there uh, we are we are residing we are doing uh, living in nuclear families nowadays. So there may be unemployment of father or mother they, because they cannot go to the job for attending the patient uh, their children. So these are the things which are uh, quite. Uh, difficult to manage at times. You may manage with leukemia, chemotherapy, medicines, support, transfusion, but these are the financial and logistic support. It is at times it is beyond uh, doctor's reach or ability. And also you can tell the patients for government funding help. Next. Now the take home message from this supportive care is very important. Yeah, proper medical support is of utmost importance. An optimal transfusion and antibiotic support is required during all phases of therapy. Educate and train the healthcare personnel dealing with intravenous catheter or PICC line. Management of comorbidities, take help from other specialists, especially medicine and gastroenterology is very important. Financial support, psychological counseling, and uh, throwing uh, of positive hope is very important. So thank you for your patience hearing. It is a difficult thing because, but mostly it is a subjective understanding on my uh, part. So thank you all, and you can ask any questions if you are interested. Uh, in your appello, how, how much uh, patient you faced the fungal infection after the chemotherapy, and how do you treat it? My uh, in, in ALL patients, uh, rarely face. Um, uh, my uh, chemo uh, fungal infections, but for AML patients, we uh, very often we uh, face fungal pneumonia in AML induction uh, patients. But all those patients we used to give, uh, we are used to give uh, voriconazole prophylaxis. And the patients who have pro pro uh, probable uh, fungal infection, we start of amputation B or castrophagy. Uh, what is the nature of the fungus? Uh, but, but, uh, have you we, we see aspergillus mucor. Luckily, we don't see that much. Okay. Secondly, how much uh, CMV infections you have found in the uh, after the uh, chemotherapy? Mm, sir, we, we usually don't uh, found another minus point is that we initially we never search for CMV because the immunocompromised status is not that long except for AML induction. 
but in those patients especially uh, when there is no response to other antibiotics then we search for cmv right after the giving drug how much cardiomyopathy you have seen uh sir drug induced uh, it's induced. difficult to tell because uh, there may be co uh, uh, confounding factors other contributory factors but partially during chemotherapy because in induction phases the mostly the hearts are normal before baseline so you don't we don't see cardiomyopathies but for elderly age group we use, usually reduce the dose so that may be another reason that we don't see the cardiomyopathy thank you okay sir